All right, folks, welcome to the most important thing of this day, church. Boo, yeah, yeah, that's I said it, all right? This is the most important thing going on on this Sunday, all right? And then there's some alternate things later, all right? Just, yeah, don't worry about it. All right. So I'm Pastor Steve. I'm here to uh, give you a sermon, sacrament today. I think it's going to be a good time. I'm glad you guys made it out. I figure a lot of people would be like, well, it just snowed for like six years. Let's, you know, just kind of wait another day. So, but it's good to have you here. If you're new for the first time, welcome, folks. We are so glad that you are here. There's a little card in front of you uh, in, the, in the little pocket things here. Uh, if you could fill that out, that would be awesome. For the new people, just so you know, all right, if you have an offering today, there's a little box in the narthex out there. Uh, we will be having communion today after the service up front here so if you want communion come on up uh, give me a few minutes and back and I will come and we'll do communion uh, prayer back in the corner there of the cross room uh, if you need it phenomenal we got a beautiful prayer ministry folks let them pray for you if you need some prayer all right well before we get into the the, the regular announcements we have a really cool announcement so I'd like to ask my friend Leah to come on down and talk to us about the glorious things that Christ is doing in the kids' ministry. Ma'am, it's all yours. Good morning, church. Am I doing this right? Yes? Okay. I got a long list, but I'll try to keep it short. But you know how I get excited and I talk so much. But anyways, okay. I wanted to let you know that Sunday school is so much fun. We, can, we either get 20 to 40 kids on a Sunday. Can you believe that? I know it. We have so much fun. We do have some consistent teachers, but we're always looking for more volunteers. And something I really, really need help with, so I'm going to put this on your heart. At 1030, when we have Sunday school, we encourage the kids to bring their Bibles every Sunday. Then we have 40 little kids who need help finding scripture when it's time to open our Bibles. Maybe you could come down and help us open Bibles and read with the kids. It's small. Baby steps to get you to come down and teach with us, but I'd love to have you come do that. Um, and I wanted to, you might have saw the announcements going around, MOPS is the Mothers of Preschoolers Ministry. Um, that's something I've been part of for eight years here. Um, our annual auction is coming up where we um, gather gift cards and gift baskets and craft goods, artwork, anything you can think of. We gather those donations and we auction them off, silent auction style. And do dollar increments, so each mom gets to come home with something really cool, and in return we get to raise money for our ministry. We also host a dinner, and we sell tickets to the dinner. This year, I think we're having a barbecue-style dinner because it's denim and diamonds theme. How fun, but you're all invited to come, so keep an eye out for the ticket sales and more information as we get closer. Okay, two more things. <laughs> Easter is right around the corner. Um, we did some really intentional things last year. We did the Resurrection Gardens, and the year before we did Resurrection Eggs. This year, we're just going to do a good old-fashioned egg hunt, and you're all invited to come and watch the kids on the grass. We're going to try to reserve the Las Fuentes grass to um, have the egg hunt, um, but I will need donations of eggs and candy, so keep a lookout for the collection baskets at the entrances of both sides of the um, church. Um, the snow kind of screwed us up. Sorry, was that a bad word to say in church? Sorry, sorry. Messed us up. <sighs> sorry. The snow kind of messed us up. <laughs> and all of my planning this week. So I feel like I'm not prepared, but we'll get there with our baskets and our bulletin boards and our everything. So just keep a lookout next week. Everything's going to start trickling in. Okay, my last announcement is about VBS. There's a hallway down here with a bulletin board by the office and one around the corner for the nursery. There's little tickets. You can just rip them off the board. There are donations, that, things we need for VBS, like applesauce pouches or pool noodles from the dollar store or what else is on there? Fishy crackers, Ziploc bags, um, so many things. So if you rip off a ticket off the bulletin board and you can fulfill that need. There's also a QR code. Do you guys know what a QR code is? Yes? There's a QR code on the bulletin board. If you scan it, it takes you to our Amazon wish list. And then that's super cool. You can just shop our wish list. And it's a lot of decorations. And you can purchase something, and it gets delivered straight to the church. And it lets me know who gifted that, so I can get you a thank you card and say thank you. Um, one more way to help with VBS is we're going to have craft kits to go that you can take home. 
Some of them are just cutting out paper and cutting out decorations, or we're gonna give you a box full of all the supplies to make like cute little crabs and jellyfish and things. Because the theme is scuba. The scheme, the, sorry, I missed that. The theme is scuba. Um, diving into a relationship with God is our theme this year. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? What else? What else? So all those needs for VBS. I also need people. So come be a part of VBS. It's June 3rd through the 7th. I'm looking for people to help teach, help supervise, help prepare snack, help um, keep us safe, monitoring the entrances and exits. Um, I need a prayer team. I need a lot of help. It takes a village to make VBS successful. Last year we had 250 people come through our campus. I'd love to see 300, 350 people. But in order to do that, I need our people to step up and help. Um, that's all I have. If you have any questions, you can email me at Leah, L-E-A-H, at American Lutheran, or just pop downstairs. I'm always there. Um, thank you for your time. Amen. Thank you. I think she mutes. I think she mutes it in back, but you can take that with you when you go back. So, all right. wow! I don't know if I can go on with the rest of these announcements. That was phenomenal, folks. Folks, the children's ministry is awesome here. So, uh, just if you feel like getting involved, jump in, folks. We really need the help. And sometimes it's that one thing. Huh? Should I really do this? It will be worth it, folks. All right. Uh, bringing Jesus to the young kids. I mean, the guy. Jesus was big on kids, right? Let the children come. All right. So, yeah. Put it down on the calendars. All right, so here's the last few announcements here. The 40 Days of Love series starts tomorrow, uh, Monday on February 12th at 10 a.m., right back there in the parlor. Uh, please let us know if you want to join the series. I think they have a little clipboard in the office. If not, just show up. We're not going to turn you away, all right, folks, so it should be good. But this is a series based uh, from uh, the Rick Warren guy. You know him? You've heard his name, right? Yeah, he did a thing in this series here, and they're going to be following that throughout this Lenten season. All right, so Ash Wednesday, folks, it's this week. You realize that, right? Men, it's really thrown us in a bind because it's actually on Valentine's Day. All right, this is, yeah, yeah, this is a time you really get down and pray, Lord, give me wisdom, all right? That's all, I'm leaving it there, all right? But... February, yes, Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. We will do the imposition of ashes and Holy Communion. All right, so 7 p.m., yes. All right, then, since it will be Lent, all right, uh, March 20th will be the last of our Lent services, and we're going to be doing one of those Seder meals, folks, the Jewish meals, right? A lot of fun. Come, and it's going to be the whole thing, not just little elements of it. So come join us, all right? Rabbi Jack Zimmerman will be uh, helping us out in this celebration. We will meet here at 6 and have the full meal in the fellowship hall, uh, of course, with Rabbi Jack. I've already called dibs on letting Elijah in, so don't even think about it, all right? We've called dibs. You know what that means, all right? So I think that's it. Folks, please stand. Let us open in prayer, and then... We'll do this. Almighty God, I just thank you for this day. I thank you that you are the priority today, and we come seeking you, Lord, to give you glory. Oh, Lord, just be with us now. May your Holy Spirit descend upon this place as we seek you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Folks, greet each other in the name of the Lord.
we gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. God gathers us together in this place. God heals the brokenhearted and binds up our wounds. God lifts down the downtrodden and casts out the wickedness. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, how about this Sunday? <laughs> oh well, we can laugh about this. Okay, the Lord has called us here this day. We open our hearts to receive God's good news. Come, let us worship God. The darkness of winter has been our companion. Lord, now the days are lengthening. Bright, bring your light to us that we might see your glory and may work for you, offering hope and peace to the world. Do not let us be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we may discern what the will of God is and what is good, acceptable, and perfect. Let us confess our sins before God and seek God's transforming mercy. God, our creator, we confess that we are broken, sinful creatures. You shine with perfect beauty, but we turn away from your presence. You blaze with heavenly glory, but we hide our faces from your truth. Forgive us, God of grace. Shine in our hearts this day through the light of your word so that we may glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Friends, hear the good news of the gospel. The brilliance of Christ's presence before us outshines the darkness of our sin. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Sing with joy, for all the ends of the earth shall know the salvation of God.
light that enlightens everyone has come into the world. God be with you. Please be seated. The first reading comes from 2 Kings chapter 2. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way to Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, so be quiet. Then Elisha said to him, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, so be quiet. Then Elisha said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elisha took his cloak, rolled it up, and stuck the water, stuck, struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over the, to dry ground. When they crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be you. Otherwise, it will not. As they were walking along and ta talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elijah saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garment and tore it in two. The second reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel <clears throat> that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. <clears throat> After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them. And a voice came from the cloud, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Be to God. Folks, please be seated. All 
All right. Well, I'm no stranger to mountains, folks. I grew up on the front range of Colorado. Anybody been on the front range? I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. It, it really is. Especially when you're living in the city of Colorado Springs, and you are literally at the foot of a 14,000-foot mountain. It's breathtaking. It really is. And I did have the opportunity once to make the 13-mile hike up to the top of that mountain and be able to look down upon the fruited plains. This is the mountain where the, the inspiration, the lady who wrote America the Beautiful, stood at the top of Pikes Peak. And from what she saw, she then penned the poem, which then became the famous song. All right, it, it's amazing. It really is. I mean, you know, we got some mountains around here, right? I mean, uh, Granite Mountain, Granite, right? It's a blip. It really kind of is a blip. All right, Glassford Hill, a blip. I mean, they're mountains, but they're not mountains. And really, being at the top of being at the top of these things is certainly an inspiration and thus leads to a lot of times you hear the expression a mountaintop experience right it's it's a, it's an experience of wonder what metaphor moment of wonder of encouragement encounter life change all right and that's why we use it it's like wow look at this i mean you don't hear a lot of people you know say yeah, I was driving through Kansas, and wow, I looked over and there was a cow sitting there, right? You don't hear people go to Holbrook and say, wow, I was driving down the road and there was a weed on the side of the right. Usually it's like, yeah, we went up to the mountains, we went to Yellowstone, we went, you know, we went to the top. Um, if you, and if you ever, what's really spectacular, I, I was also in Washington State, uh, outside of Tacoma, all right, Fort Lewis. And I tell you what, um, you don't see the mountain there. But when you do, well, because it's cloudy, right? But when summer comes, and all of a sudden you wake up, walk out, and you're at sea level, and you look 14,000 feet, it's like that's truly why. It, it's like just, it's there. You cannot miss it, folks. All right, so we're talking a little bit about a mountain today. You know that, right? You pick it up in the gospel? Dragon? Okay, good, good, good. We'll, we'll, we'll lead it along here, all right? But most importantly, as you notice, this is white today, all right? Not green, which is regular. It's the transfiguration. And we're talking about an event that happened on a mountain with Christ. And this does apply to our lives, believe it, all, believe it or not, quite a bit. Um, we come across the transfiguration quite often in the Bible. It's good. I mean, pastors were like, oh, transfiguration again. So really, it's on us, coming up with material for y'all, all right? But it's definitely something we want to pay attention to. All right, so let's figure this out. Why did the transfiguration happen? All right, it kind of is an odd story, right? It really is. It, uh, Jesus is ministering, he's healing, he's doing stuff like that. He's getting ready to go to Jerusalem, go to the cross. I mean, and then there's this story in the middle, kind of a supernatural mountaintop experience. Like, why is that even in here? Only three of the disciples went up. What, what, what did it matter? It wasn't like in front of 5,000 people. However, that had been done already, folks. So what we're going to do to ask, answer the question, why did this happen? We're going to look at the context. You, you, you understand the context, right? If you get to a Bible passage, go back and check out what was going on before and then after. And usually what happens in the middle, the scripture of the day, boom, you're going to be good to go. You're going to be tracking with it and be able to understand, oh, that's what... Jesus is saying. That's what Paul's saying. That's what Peter's saying. So, we find out that Jesus is out doing ministry in Mark chapter 8, because that was Mark chapter 9. All right? He's moving along. He's doing miracles. Just fed 4,000 people. Same as the 5,000 people. Few loaves of bread and some fish. He goes, he casts out some demons. He gets challenged by the Pharisees as usual. And then the question is asked, Mark 8, 27 through 29. Track with this here. 
Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, Who do people say that I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still other, one of the prophets. But what about you? Who do you, who do you say that I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. All right, folks. What we have going on is before the transfiguration, there was the talk of the town where people were really sitting there going like, who is this guy? Who is this Jesus? Because they're watching him walk around, preach wonderfully, but preach a lot different than the Pharisees and the Sadducees were pre preaching. He was flipping Jewish culture upside down. And he was declaring the kingdom of God has come. And repent. Interesting. But his preaching, and he was preaching with authority. It wasn't just some guy sitting up there behind the lectern and dro drawing on, you know what I'm saying? He was preaching with authority, charisma. He was engaging the people. Not only engaging them, but what else was he doing? He was touching their lives, right? Healing them. Casting out demons. Really making them stop and wonder, huh, who is this man? Who is this Jesus? Right here is the first answer to the question, all right? The talk of the town. And it kind of shows us, really, the answer to the question from the human perspective. Because to the Jewish folk at the time, all they really remember was what they were taught, right? Well, they had seen John the Baptist, phenomenal preacher, bringing forth a baptism of repentance, right? But they had heard the stories about Elijah. Maybe this is Elijah come back. Maybe this is Moses. Maybe this is just simply a great prophet. But if they simply stopped there, what? They would have gotten it wrong, right? Right? Jesus was more than just a prophet, folks. In fact, Jesus fulfilled what the prophets had said. Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Now, all this plays out, Lord, as it goes, folks. We know, all right, we know the story, right? You read, right, the Gospels? You're tracking? You, you do. I hope you know the story because, I mean, it gets kind of crazy at the end of Mark, all right? And at all these Gospels. But we truly do know, being modern people who have studied our Bibles and know history, that yes, Jesus was the Son of God. We know what his mission was. But to them, it's like, well, all right, what's going on? Who really is he? Peter says, you are the, you are the Messiah. All right, so this sets kind of our context because the transfiguration really shows us the divine response. Tracking? This is pretty cool, folks. All right, so, all right, divine response, go there, 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 carry the one. Okay, got it. All right, so in the transfigura transfiguration, God wanted to show who Christ was truly really was to these people so thus the passage i read today from the gospel the mountaintop experience all right so we're going to go through the events that happen on the mountain you ready for this it's pretty complicated all right all right so early in the morning they got up they grabbed their gear right their hiking sticks everything no 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 that's too much detail there folks too much detail there and I'm going back kind of to my experience in Colorado. All right. <laughs> so here are the events. Number one, Jesus' appearance was transfigured. His appearance, his appearance itself was transfigured, all right? And what was it? How does it describe it? Whiter? Well, you said, uh, snow, don't bring... We're not going to bring snow into this, folks, all right? We've had enough of that. Whiter than anybody could ever bleach anything in the world, all right? That's pretty white, all right? I've made that mistake. Ask my wife, all right? I'm like, hey, this looks like detergent, right? Toss it in. Oh, no. 
when everything comes out white, it's not, and it's white, don't get me wrong, all right? But what was going on with this? Christ's glory was revealed, and it was just probably a shimmer of his glory. You understand that, right? They looked upon him, and he glowed white. We know that if you truly saw the glory of God himself, you, you, uh, technically you can't live through it. It's, that, and it's not a bad death, folks. I mean, you die seeing the glory of God. That's phenomenal. Right? It's just so powerful. When Moses encountered God and said, let me see you, God's like, all right, but I've got to stick you in a crevice here because you can't look me directly in the face or you're going to die. That's where I get that. And sure enough, that's what happened. The glory that Moses saw when he watched God walk by was on him for like 40 days afterward. He just glowed. It just it, See, folks, what I'm getting at? We cannot comprehend that unless somebody's done it. Anybody? Any, I, I mean, I, I have to ask. Anybody ever seen that? It's amazing, right? Because we have, and we're going to find out, I believe, seen glimpses of God's glory. But let's move on. So his glory was shown. And that's kind of one of those things where if the apostles are questioning things at this point, yeah, I mean, that, I mean I'd say, yep, Jesus, Son of God, got it. All right. Second thing that happens, and this is where it gets kind of interesting here. Um, Moses and Elijah appear. Moses and Elijah. That's odd, right? What do you think that was about? I mean, it could have been anybody maybe from the Old Testament. I mean, like Joseph maybe? Joshua? No, but for some reason, Moses and Elijah appear with him. Have you ever really sat down and thought that out? And then they start talking. I mean, I don't personally know exactly what they were talking about, folks. I was not there. All right? And it doesn't record the exact things they were talking about. But they were probably having some small talk a little bit there, right? How's heaven? Oh, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. How's God doing? He's doing good. Yeah, the angels. Yeah. All right? So they probably had that, right? But we probably also, and a lot of scholars think, they were basically talking to him about, hey, you ready for this kid? You ready to do this? There's more to it, though. The law and the prophets. Think about it for a minute. Moses representing the law? Huh. Didn't he have a mountaintop experience? Yeah, he did, right? Mount Sinai. He went up on the mountain, met with God, basically got the law established, all right? Came down with the 15 commandments, dropped one, now we have 10, right? It was in a movie, folks. It's a joke. It's a joke. Walk it off. Walk it off, all right? <laughs> Got to have some fun with it. Oh, and by the way, they there's a video on YouTube about some, there's these explorer dudes that go out and find these things, right? They took a drone up to a, no, to a mountain on the other side of the Red Sea, all right, in Saudi Arabia, all right? They couldn't get close to the mountain because there was a, a, a fence around it, so they, threw this, they flew this drone up. The top of the mountain's black as can be, folks, scorched, and all the mountains around it, nothing, and it's not even a volcanic area. Oh, yeah, think it happened? I, I know it happened, folks, all right? So he goes up, he brings, it's just a, side note there folks I know so I'm looking at where, where the transfiguration <laughs> it's just a, a side note about history folks we found people have found Mount Sinai and they have video footage to prove it but we'll move on from there but Moses comes down he represents the law and to the Jews that's what he represents because he established the law well what about Elijah prophet of God right one of the greatest prophets of God I mean, I can take you back to Pastor Jack's, you know, Elijah and the prophets of Baal, you know, sermon. Phenomenal. Elijah was, is the person who represents the prophets in Israeli lore, history, whatever you want to call it, in the word of God, all right? So this is important. Law and the prophets. Because what happens in the transfiguration here is there comes a time... Near the end, 
when these two fade away, right? And are gone. So what we have is a representation of Jesus fulfilling the law, thus Moses fades away, and fulfilling the prophecy of the prophets. The prophets fade away, leaving one standing, right? One central focus standing, Jesus Christ. Again, we're seeing forth the glory of Christ, who Jesus Christ is. That's pretty cool. And then we have suddenly at the very end, God the Father audibly, audibly speaks. What's he say? This is my son whom I love. All right, confirmation right there. Listen to him. I'll say it again. Listen to him. Not just the message for the apostles, disciples, all right? But a message throughout time. Listen to him. Because I guarantee you, in your lives, folks, you have seen Christ manifested in some way. We are going to get into that. All right? The reality of Christ at transfiguration is clear to the three disciples that are there. All right? We've just looked at it, the mountaintop experience. What does it mean for us today, right? Because it would have been pretty cool to be, see that back then, folks. I'll admit, that'd be pretty cool. All right? I believe God in our day shows us who he is, each and every day, actually. It's just, I think, that as human beings in this fast-paced world... We are too absorbed in the world we live in. Do you? Uh, come on, folks. You get caught up on, in the week? Do you? You probably get caught up Monday morning when that alarm goes off. Oh, Lord, it started. The week has started, right? You got to look at your appointments. You got to look at who you got to go see, where you have to go. Maybe go to work if you still work. Yes, it keeps dragging me back. All right? We get too absorbed. We get too focused on what is around us to see his glory, I think. Can you understand that? I mean, we come on Sunday, it's pretty cool. You know, we get a good sermon, good music. We get communion. All right? But then they launch us back out into the world and we got to deal with all that stuff. It's not easy, right? It gets hectic. And really, sometimes you have to pay attention quite carefully to make sure you don't get duped or get something. Yeah, hold on tight is what it comes down to. And I think we get too focused on what's going on out there to see his glory, all right? And then what happens? We tend to focus on fear, anxiety, and self, right? We got to remember. We have a Lord and Savior that loves us and reveals himself to us daily. All right, so now I got a witness for you. The reason I tell this story is because it was a life-changing experience for me. I saw the salvation of Jesus Christ. Not just for, not for my soul. I was already a Christian. This is from my chaplain days, all right? I saw the glory of I saw Jesus work on my behalf. And I have to tell this story because this is a witness. This is seeing him glorified in him in my life. All right. I'm finishing up the Sunday. No, not the sermon. We, we still got probably maybe 10 minutes, maybe. So I mean, no, I had an actual person say, no, don't do it. Thank you. I appreciate that. You guys want to hit a whole hour here? No, I just, I'm just joking. People are like, what? <laughs> All right. I'm finishing up the contemporary evening service in Iraq. All right. It was a phenomenal service, folks. It really went well. I mean, we were up to about 80, 90 soldiers. All right. 7 p.m. on a Sunday night. Go figure that. In a war zone. Woo. That's good. I'm walking back to the barracks. I'm passing by the hospital here on my left. 
And I, my conversation with God is simply, Lord, I think that was a really good service. Thank you for helping me, giving me a message. Thank you for touching the hearts of the soldiers, right? And as I'm walking towards, I had an option. And some people have heard the story. Don't give it away. I'm walking towards, it was a wall that separated the compound. It split it in two, all right? It's good. It was just there, all right? On the left side was a uh, vehicle gate. The vehicle gate, that's where everybody went. It was the main route. It went right past the PX and the burger bar, all right? It was good. And then off to the right, there was an itty-bitty little man gate in, in the wall, okay, that went by the front gate. Nobody liked to go by the front gate. That's usually what got bombed, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just, again, talking to God. And then I literally hear in my brain, which I, I'm saying, Lord's saying something to me here, folks, all right? As I start to go to the left, because that's the main gate, that's where the burger bar is, right? Um, he's like, no, don't go that way. Go right. I'm like, oh, okay. Doesn't really matter here. So I start going to the right, still talking to God, just like, hey, it was a good service. And it's darker to the right, too. Um, all right, so the front pew's there. That's the gate, right? All right, tracking with me? We're going to see this a little bit more here. I'm not going to do part of it, though. All right. So about 10 feet away from the gate there, real quiet night, I hear an audible metallic noise in the distance. I don't think nothing of it, so I'm walking. Five feet from the gate, right? Right as I get to the gate. Whoosh! The distinctive sound of a rocket that had just been fired into the fog. All right, now this is the part I'm not going to do. I fell down to the ground instantly. Hit the deck. We have incoming rounds, right? As I hit the dirt, my head turns to the left, right at the vehicle gate, the rocket impacts. Do you understand what just happened there, folks? I understood as I laid there for a second and said, thank you, Jesus. You just saved me from getting blowed up. I would have crossed at the exact same time at that point if I hadn't listened to Christ, right? If I hadn't listened to what God said pretty distinctly to me, no, don't go that way. Go to the right. It wasn't some deep theological message, right? It was literally just a simple message. Go that way. No explanation. I just said, Roger, that, let me do that. I was just adrenaline shaking like, oh, God, thank you. Got up and sprinted back to the command center where I come running in with my eyes big. They're like, chaplain, calm down. What's going on? I said, I almost got blowed up by a rocket, but I didn't. And they were, okay, chaplain. <laughs> I know, it's, I know their response really wasn't what I wanted. I hope that the whole command center would have got down on their knees and gave their lives to the Lord, right? Well, that was to come, yeah. I mean, we definitely was able to witness to that. But wow, truly a moment of seeing God's hand. Has anybody else seen God's hand in their life? I know you have. I mean, it may not have been life-saving, but then again, if you're a Christian, life has been saved, right? We see it happen every day, but we don't recognize it. The little blessings, the little things God does for his family. Have you ever had a clear vision of Christ in your life? Well, that's the goal, folks. The goal is to live with him each and every day and experience him and encounter him, him every single day of our lives and get to the point where we recognize him in our lives each and every day. So I've got some scripture passages here that show us this. Because first and foremost, where do we start? In the word of God. Check these out. You're going to love these. These are realities that we can rely on about his glory in our lives each and every day if we just simply stop and listen to these verses. You ready? And this is just a little smidge of them, all right? We, I mean, anybody got a Bible down there? I mean, it's pretty thick, right? 
There's a lot of promises. There's a lot of things God has done, right? It's certainly not a one-night read, okay? It's thick. John 16, 33. Check this one out. This one's cool. This is one of my favorite verses. I have said these things to you, that's Jesus saying to us, that you may have peace. Oh, are you telling me Jesus wants us to have peace? Yes. In the world, whoa, 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 this goes in a weird direction. In the world, you will have tribulation, huh? Serious, Jesus? Yes. It happens every day. In this world, you will have tribulation. Oh, where's this peace coming from, Jesus? Ready? But take heart. I have overcome the world. Your Savior has overcome the world. Thus, He helps us to overcome the world. Do you understand that? We simply just got to listen to Him and put our trust in That's a cool message. That's a mountaintop message. All right? How about Deuteronomy? A little Old Testament, right? Yeah, it's not bad. I like the Old Testament. Whoa. He's kind of challenging us here, guys. Be strong and courageous, okay? Do not fear or be in dread of them, okay? For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. Best part coming up. He will not leave you nor forsake you. So next time you're in trouble or going through a hard time and you're thinking, well, God ditched me. Nope, impossible. Actually, what's going on in that moment is he's picked you up and he's carrying you through the tribulation. Understand that? Because he said he will never leave you nor forsake you. All right. Uh, this applies to the listen side of all of this, right? This is, people sometimes don't like this one. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. All right. This is a listen one. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And so this is the point where you're like, yeah, pastor, good luck with that, right? No. Listen to it. That's all of us, right? There is so much joy that comes from this. So much just like, uh, just understanding of purpose that comes from this. Do it. Your life will be phenomenal, folks. You will have joy like you've never had before. Now, to finish up, now we're finishing up. You realize that the glory of Christ was revealed a second time on a mountain. The transfiguration was the first time. But there was also a second time that his glory was revealed. Do you all kind of know what that is? This was a little bit different. His glory was revealed on a cross on a hill, right? Well, how can that be? How can the cross be glory? Because that's where our salvation was won. Do you understand that? And that's true glory right there. Because at that point, he defeated death, rose again on the third day, folks, and now lives evermore. That's the most important part here, folks. That's the mountaintop experience, the most important mountaintop experience. And that's definitely something I know since you're sitting here, you've listened to, but we've got to listen to it again and truly understand it. All right, folks, so here's what it comes down to. And thank God we live in Arizona and not in Nebraska for this sermon, all right? Look to the mountain. See the glory of God. Listen to it. Amen. All right, folks, please stand. We're going to do the hymn Immortal Invisible, right, Miss Anita? All right, let's hit it.
Please join me in saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. The third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through his prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this day of rejoicing, we pray for the life of the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of transforming power, we know that our church can be a fertile ground where we can grow and be nourished by one another. You created us for relationships, and while we know you want us to invite others to join us, help us to do so without making the church in lockstep with the secular world. You have warned us not to be conformed to the ways of the world. Therefore, we ask that all churches be renewed and transformed into beacons of light and love. Help us to welcome others, to become a part of the incredible transformation that we can have when we seek your good, pleasing, and perfect will. Hear us, O God. Blessed Redeemer, when we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Free us from the slavery of sin and heal all our self-inflicted wounds. Show us where and how we have wounded others. Then convict our hearts so that we would seek to mend the relationship broken. We lift up those open wounds and ask that you would bring healing to all we name in our hearts at this time. Hear us, O God. Sovereign Lord, you change times and seasons. You remove kings and set up kings. You give wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. We ask that you would reveal to all in authority what is in the darkness and shine the light of truth in all our lives so that your people are guided by your word. Hear us, O God. Join our voices with your faithful ones in every time and place. We offer our prayers in the name of the newborn King, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
This week, our Lenten journey begins over these next weeks of Lent through prayer, worship, and personal devotion. May you encounter Jesus, and may those encounters change you and transform you into the person God desires you to be. And now may the grace and mercy of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with you always. Amen. Go in peace. Proclaim the good news.